we've got to spend a little time talking, or a long time, talking about Chad and Duff yeah. as, as the primary rhythm section of this situation yes. and how that was working with not just your friends, not just your heroes, but collaborators on a record which is important. Chad's the best. He's a good guy, I think. Yeah. No one touches him. You can just listen to the album, you know, or listen to all of his stuff. He's just ferocious and loves it and is so excited, you know, he's so excited. But Duff and Chad, they just sat right over there, just next, you know, Duff was right on Chad the whole time. And it was wild. I can't really explain it. It was just like the room was like levitating. And what's cool, I think, about this record, and I'm such a fan of rock music. I'm mm. the biggest fan of all of the people involved in this album. I know they're all of their discographies. The best part of all of their music is that it's unpredictable and it's not loop based and it's performance based music. The bass player plays a little quieter in the verse and a little harder in the chorus, yeah. even if it's the same chords. And the drummer's bashing when it it's gets to the chorus. It's master class they're playing on this record. And coming back down, but you can feel it come up and come down and breathe. And I feel like rock music needs that. It shouldn't, you know, I love making gridded music. I love making things that make you just kind of feels like it's knocking and you get lost in. This is not that. Well, it's commercially acceptable without yeah. being hokey kind of thing. You know? mm -hmm. Ozzy brought over this keyboard. It's right behind you. It's actually right there. It's yeah. the ARP 2600 that he played on the first Sabbath album and Sabbath Bloody Sabbath. Uh -huh. No, it was uh, Volume 4. Volume 4. Who are you? And... He brought it over. It's, there's a Black Sabbath sticker on the back. That's the keyboard. It's all over this album. And one of my favorite moments with him was listening to Sabbath. We listened to Sabbath together. He run those speakers and wow. he was like showing me where it was on on all the songs. And it's just like, it's just. It just must be really great to be able to add some value to. Yeah, your, but you know, you know something. I'm spoiled. So I go, why is it a fucking IRP? What's that? Really? And it's like, people look at it and go, he played on that song. Uh, I forget. He told me having someone that was playing a Beatles song. Because you lived it. That's, that's, that's what I'm trying to get to is the distinction between be, coming into this world that you've lived vicariously through the music and the legends and the, and the behavior that's inspired you and helped build who you are today. Yes. And then connecting with the gentleman who has lived it. You've lived it. So it's like, it must be a strange sensation still to this day when people try to get inside the life that is just your life. When you do it, you take it for granted. Yeah. Yeah. When I first met Paul McCartney, I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, I mean, Ringo, I met Ringo, I never met Sharon, met all of them. But then my, my son goes to me, he goes, oh, I like some of the Beatles. I don't see what you're going on. I says, yeah. I says, you know what it was like when that happened? You go to bed today in black and white, you wake up in colour. That's how that, that, that profound he was. Mm. What else you got? So... Ozzy, um, he comes in with a printout news article, hands me, and I'm like, I'm reading it, and it's about this German guy who put an advert in for someone to go and eat him. So Ozzy wanted to write the song from the perspective of the guy who wanted to be eaten right. and, and convincing someone to eat him. Right. So it's called Eat Me. That is really good, man. Thanks. Who's in the middle? Tom Morello? Yeah, he just played a little. He just came and did the Tom Morello. He just thing. did a little uh, alien sounds. Yeah, us. he's really good at that. Everyone just was like, heard this album was happening and just everyone just kept Who else? Out. Who else rolled through? Uh, Tom. Yeah. Tom Morello slash Chad Duff. Uh, um, Post Malone is on another say, song. You gotta reach out to the guy who started the whole thing. He's on a new song. So, okay, we started with Post. Yeah. Let's work out how Post fits into this. So, Post was, we, him and Ozzy obviously became very good friends you as like well. You like him? Lovely. Mm. Great guy. Mm. And so we were all talking one day. I think Post FaceTimed us from the road and we were telling him about the album. He's like, I want to I want to do a song. I want to be in a song. I want to be in a song. I sent him some of the stuff we were doing all along the way and he was like, dude, you're living your dream. It's amazing. You know, he's such a fan of music and yeah. rock music and obviously been one of my best friends forever. So once I heard that he wanted to be part of the album, I was like, okay, we can do another song that's slow and that kind of thing, or we could do the complete opposite. And so we made a song uh, that is the complete opposite that Post is on and, and them together. It's called It's a Raid, and it's about a story that Ozzy has of a, of a drug bust. Real life story? Yeah. 
Oh, we're doing volume four. Mm. We were renting a house in uh, Bel Air, and we got a big bowl of fucking coal, a coal, a coal, or everything on the table. So I'm sitting there, I mean, for the fucking air condition. So there's these buttons on the wall. So I think it's the air condition, I press the button. At 50 minutes later, about six cop cars come screaming down the drive. Off corner, uh, a Bel Air patrol. So I'm going, it's a fucking rage! So I grab the car. Wait, you called them? No. Yeah. By mistake. By mistake. You thought the air conditioner so was, you called the, it was the panic button. <laughs> <laughs> so, dude, I get to hear all these stories all the time. So I'm like, we got to make a song about that. Right? Like, it's amazing. I so, can't believe you called the cops on yourself. I thought it was an air conditioning button. It was a fucking Bel Air Patrol. Oh, shit. Oh, it's a fucking raid. I'm grabbing all the dope. So we did a thrasher, and that's the one with him post. Put that on. Mm-hmm. It's not, this is not my, what my, I would usually do as well. It's... Yeah, the obvious question is going to be now that I got you guys in front of me is, is where to next? Like you just said before, everyone's playing their asses off because they want to be able to take this to put it in front of people. Can you, are you strong enough? We're going to do another album first. Straight back in, do another one. Yeah. Just too well, much fun? Too much fun to stop? I will. I don't know when I'm going to be ready for the road. I hope I'm, I'm, I'm waking, waking up and going, is it today? Yeah. It's just fucking slow recovery. Yeah. But uh, as long as you get to keep feeding the creative spirit, right? No, well, it keeps me in the game, you know. It keeps me doing something. I mean, I'm so, I lie there thinking I'm, I'm over, you know, and I can't do anything. This is giving me a new lease of life. Do you think Sharon and the kids and everyone who's closest to you have noticed the oh, difference between before yeah. and after? Well, I can't stop hearing the f- <laughs> How does he sound? Oh, it's unbelievable, That's honestly. That's what I mean. So why would you stop making music when you sound that good? No, it's incredible. And let me tell you something. I mean, there aren't many vocalists, even with the greatest of respect to who you are and, and how you face down the, the greatest arrangements and songs of all time and made them your own. That is powerful music. There aren't many singers you could give those kind of arrangements and those songs to, and they would be able to to lasso them, to harness them. And you've done that, man. I mean, I know it's an obvious thing to say, you're Aussie fucking Osborne, but shit, that's powerful music. When you're doing it, you just, you don't think, oh, this is gonna be the best thing I've ever done. You hope it is. I, I, it's worth poker. In the past, I've thought, this has got to be a winner. And I've been sadly disappointed. And I, I mean, I, I don't think I've had that many f- Failure. No. Well, you come with a musical idea and somebody goes, oh man, that song's great. That's that's all it takes, really. For one person to say, I really like that. Even better when a million people say it. Music has consistently saved your life, hasn't it? Oh, yeah. oh I don't know what I'd done if it wasn't for music. How many times do you think music has saved your life? Oh, every fucking day. <laughs> I wasn't any good at anything else. I wasn't good. At, couldn't stand. I was, when I was at school, I'm, I'm dyslexic. Incredibly dyslexic. I had an attention deficit order. I never knew what it was when yeah. I was at school. I didn't even learn anything. Yeah. I hated school. Came back, couldn't hold the job down. Went to the same school as Tony and I. We just got to go and there we go. From album one, I had every, every album I made. Mm. The first Black Sabbath album was done in 12 hours. You know, you were talking before about how you've been seven years sober. And I wonder kind of where you think that the. the the propensity for coping comes from that when you've gone back in and you've found yourself at weakness. Well, again. I thought I could never. I thought, I thought it was the drugs and the alcohol that made it all work, but it's not true. It's like, I mean, all I was doing for years was self medication because I didn't like the way I felt. But then, this is the first album I co wrote and, and recorded completely. So. The first. Yeah, I mean, uh, I did the last album. I wrote some of it stone and some of it, but this is a, I mean, I, I quite like being so sober now, because I'm just going to remember the thing I did yesterday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, it's fear, isn't it? I always think, like, when you get into a habit, a cycle of making things under a certain environment, you're scared mm-hmm. if you stop. You're not going to be well, able to do well, that when I, when I first ran into Betty Ford, people said to me, don't lose your talent, you know. It's a terrible thing to say to somebody. Well, like, right. it's awful. Am I doing the right thing? Yeah, 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 yeah. Put the last track on. Let's do it. And uh, this was the last time we were out together. And every time I rock, you, you say, put that on the next album. I can't put it now. I 
It's one of my favorite songs on the record. What's that called? Today's the end. Yeah, you know, can I tell you what it conjures up for me? And I, I don't pre pretend to assume this is what the song's about, but it makes me feel somber. Um, it makes me feel for the Lane Staley's and the Chester Bennington's and the Chris Cornell's and the great artists that we've lost even just in this, this, this century and just before, you know, and why we end up in this place over and over again where great artists can't function beyond art, you know? But then, why am I? A, I mean, Chris Cornell was a great, great singer. Oh, man. I was with him Greatest at, of our time, I think. I've met him a bunch of times. It's just, it breaks my heart because I feel like the ultimate, this really tragic trade is that we get these songs that make us feel less alone and yet it doesn't seem to work for the people who no, write them. I'm not being funny and I'm not being cocky. I can remember times when I fucking woke up, puked down, I fucking woke up in bed full of blood when I fell down and banged my head at I mean, I've done so many, and I go, my friend John Bonham, yeah. I used to go drink with him. He died. Bon Scott died. I don't know what the fucking shit I, People go, you must have the Midas touch or whatever. I'm lucky. I wasn't any better than any of them. In fact, I would go so I just I was worse in some cases. But it's a luck of the draw. I'm 71, I don't fucking understand how I got there. You're writing and making some of the best music. I mean, it, it, this new album is so fantastic, melodically, thematically, lyrically, the playing, everything about it is so lovingly done for oh, all the parts. Oh, the thing with Black Sabbath, Geezer was the main lyricist, and then he'd give me a lyrics to sing, and sometimes I'd go, what the f*** does this mean? <laughs> He's very educated, <laughs> Very clever, very, very, I mean, this is kind of coming and say, you know what, you know that song, Every week I was going, another f***ing school shooting. It's getting so frequent now, it's like, is that all we do now in a f***ing school? We talk about that song and it's clear now what the meaning behind that song is and it's about, you know, um, the school shootings and the fact that children have to literally run for their lives in order to have an education sometimes. Yeah. Um, when you think of that, you send your kids to get an education and you go, f*** off, I mean, it's got to be every parent's worst nightmare. It's just not supposed to happen. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you can do whatever you want to your body, but God forbid anything should happen my to your children, my, right? My I mean, yeah, 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 that's right. You know, I feel like this, on this album, you are finding ways to discuss things, whether it's interesting stories like the eat me thing, but right through to things that are genuinely, d d that are dividing the well, country and uniting the country and the world. But also, you have to disguise things in a certain way, because if you go, Kids out of school, they're getting shot. You can't be so blatant as that. You? Yeah. And we were just, the kids are running as fast as they can. I think this could be the end. Yeah, it's a brilliant line, and it really it, now I, now I know what it's about, and I'm after listening for the first time. It, it paints the picture that in a way it needed to be painted. Before we let you go, you said it. Album number two for you guys. Yep. Will it be the same rhythm section? Is that are you committed to working together? Who knows? <laughs> Probably. It's up to the boss. Up to the boss. Why f*** up a good thing? Oh, it sounds great. It sounds unbelievable, Ozzy. Congratulations. Um, you know, I wish you all the best in, as, in your continued recovery. You seem good, man. Thank you. And, uh, Thank I, you know, you. I, I would love to, I would love to, um, to come back and talk again when the next one's done and make a habit of this, You're right? You're welcome. It'd be great. Absolutely. <laughs>